Yep, you guessed it, the dreaded oil leak and how to solve it. Let's get into it. And we're gonna talk about a particular engine that is notorious for massive oil leak. So the first thing I wanna talk about is obviously the oil level. So you gotta open the hood and check your oil level out. And from the top here, you can look around and see if you see anything else, you know, like massive oil on the top. Sometimes you'll get some blow by, but the first thing I'm gonna do is definitely look under the hood. And the nice thing about it being a Jeep is we're gonna open this thing all the way up right to there. And uh, there it is, there's the 3.6. We have an engine cover, so Unfortunately, we have to take that off. Not unfortunate, it's pretty easy. But there it is. So the first thing you wanna do is check the oil level. No matter what vehicle it is, you always wanna make sure you have the proper amount of oil. So therefore, you're, you don't wanna diagnose and then have your engine start knocking, right? So let's check our oil level. Vehicle's been shut off for probably about a good half hour now. So this is gonna be a good indicator of the proper oil level. It's not like it's still really hot and it was running. So, let's see where we're at. Yeah, L holy moly. Look at that. There is nothing on that dipstick. Nothing. Let's get some oil, put some oil in it so we can do a better diagnostic. I'll do one quart and then check it. And then we'll go from there. All right, so three quarts in. Let's see where we're at on the stick now. All right, perfect right there at the very top of the X's. That means that this thing took three quarts and it takes six to fill it. That's three quarts shy of being empty. Uh, they couldn't have come a moment too soon to get this fixed and solved because if they ran out of oil, well, we'd be talking more about than an oil leak, wouldn't we? So now we're gonna take a flashlight and we're gonna look around the top before we run it to see if there's any massive pouring out. Let's see if we have any indicators of where puddles could be. Well, I know what this vehicle is notorious for, and that will be right here, this little indicator right here, and that is the oil filter housing, and it's on a block that mounts the top of the engine block. It has little O-rings that like to leak. Now, the other key thing is, you can see down there, there is oil right down there on that engine block from this housing. And I'll show you the part, because we do sell it at Juan Auto. It's one of our top sellers, because this particular engine is notorious for this. Uh, and it's a very expensive job, but I want to show you that you can do it. It can be done, and it's close to $2,000 to R&R &R this at a proper garage with the part. And you could probably do it for under $400 if you do it yourself. So we see oil down there. Mm, I don't think it's a sloppy oil change because that is the filter. I'm going to go with that's leaking, but I'm going to do some secondary looking and confirm it out the back of the bell housing because that's where people get confused and think it's the valve covers. So let's go look down there. All right, so here we are. Look at this oil. It's everywhere. Matter of fact, I have to watch where I'm going because I don't want to get showered on. Um, geez, this is severe. It doesn't make it any easier. Some people think, well, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's obvious, but it's not easy to diagnose. This is so covered that technically I would wash this and then see if I could run it and find the oil leak. But I don't have time to do that. So I'm basically going to try to run this. We know the oil's full now because I, I added oil. So with the oil full, let's hope that under some pressure, this thing shows some massive spraying because this is not a small leak. It's a major leak. It's going to come out wherever it's leaking. So let's see if we can get a good shot on the camera with this thing running. Oof. So now we're underneath the vehicle with it running. And this is how I'm going to try to do some diagnosing here. I'm not going to wash this whole thing down like I said, but I'm looking at the engine block. I'm looking at the front crank, dry. There's no oil here on this oil pan. All the way around each side, there's no oil in the oil pan or the block. On top of the block is the head, and on top of the head is the valve cover. And there's no oil. There's zero oil all the way around. I can see the driver's side head real clear, and there is no oil coming out of that valve cover or the head. But the top of the bell housing is soaked, and it's coming down here, and it's dripping. Some people might say, well, maybe it's a rear main seal. Rear main seal would do this. Yeah, it would. But it wouldn't put it on the top of the bell housing because gravity won't allow it. So I know that an oil seal like a crank, front or rear, won't leak on the outside of a bell housing. It's impossible. It'll leak on the outside on the bottom, but that's because they put drains in it 
and if it was internally leaking, it would drip out the bottom, but not the top. So that tells me it's going to be something from the top of the engine, and the only other thing up there other than the valve covers is the oil filter housing. And that, the, the lower intake does not have oil going through it, so we're focusing on this oil filter housing. That engine light is on. So let's pull the code and see if it has anything to do with this, or if it doesn't. PO6DD, generic code. That means it's, a, it's an actual Chrysler code. So let's see what the next one is. Same, same. Well, my experience tells me what that code is, and it's low oil pressure. So now this really sets into my mind that the oil leak is causing the engine light to come on, plus it was the loss of the three quarts of oil. So now I'm gonna take the upper plenum off and I'm gonna start digging down into that oil filter housing that's mounted to the top of the block, and let's see what kind of nightmare we see. All right, so I took the upper intake off, I disconnected my fuel line to the rail, all the injector harnesses, undid the bolts. Now I'm gonna lift up that lower intake so we can actually see that oil filter housing and confirm that there's oil all sitting in the valley. So let's, let's see if we can get this free. And yep, exactly what I thought it was gonna be. There's oil all sitting on the top of that engine block. It's coming out of the O-rings of this oil filter housing. I'm just gonna work it. And that is definitely the oil source. Look at that. So I wanted to put them on the table. I'm usually not a display kind of person, but I had to show you this because first thing is I've done many of these jobs. This item, you can get anywhere, but it comes with everything from 1AUTO. Even has the lovely oil filter. It comes with the oil filter. So all you gotta do is supply your oil because it's really important to do an oil change after you do this job. So this is the old one. Now the new one comes with all the sensors too. There's two sensors included. And I want to show you just how, what happens. These O-rings get crushed. Look how flat the surface is. It's from tightening the torque spec and plastic on steel. That's going to flatten out after a while. Look at the raised. You look at the new one. That's O-rings. That's how raised up it comes. So that makes a good seal. You have an O-ring because it goes into a tube right there. And it comes with the bolts. Bolts are part of the actual mechanism. It comes with the filter. You're going to torque that down to the specs once you get that in. Torque these to specs, but you're going to clean up that mess. You have to clean that mess up. Clean it, wipe it down, make sure there's no debris around. Install this. What a difference. Now, this job does call for like three, four hour job, maybe three and a half hour job. You can do it step for step. We have the videos on our website to show you. And it comes with the intake, upper and lower gaskets. You don't even have to do anything. Just get oil and you're ready to go. All right, so I'm going to put the uh, oil filter housing down in there, the cooler. Got the hose back on and put fresh oil on these O-rings. And this just makes a seal. It makes a nice like connection. They don't have to be doused in it. This one, I hope, it doesn't give me any trouble because it's going to go down in a tube. So now, snug that up. I'm going to place it down. And I've got to really concentrate on that tube with that O-ring. Rock it back and forth. Perfect. I'm not going to put the connectors on until I get these started. All right, so the sequence is, this is one. I'm just bottoming it out. And then two is back here. Three is the second one closest to the housing, oil filter. Then four. And then five is this one. And I'm just bottoming them out because now I'm going to get my torque wrench. Torque is 106 inch pounds. I'm going to go to like 60. And then I'll go to, I'm going to do it in stages. Okay, here we go. 106. Now I'm going to connect my connectors in the back here. Lock that on. Same with this. And then push that safety lock back down. Now that I've lubed up the new filter, 
seal on the end and the o-ring for the cover I'm gonna snug that down this is a 24 millimeter socket so we're just gonna snug it and I'll get my torque wrench and torque it to the 24 newton meters so now I'm gonna take the intake and the upper intake so lower and upper and I'm gonna clean them up put the new gaskets in and reinstall them all right so we're gonna put our last quart in get that going down in there I've already done the coolant so once this is all set, I'll put the engine cover on. Nah, maybe I'll run it without it, because that way I can get a good visual of everything. It's going to smoke because, well, you saw how much oil was there. So after this, once it's running, reaches temperature, I'm happy with it in the bay, I'll drive it to a car wash, do the undercarriage, get rid of all that mess. I don't recommend spraying it with parts cleaner, only because if you get that into the O2 sensor, you'll probably end up with O2 code. So they never like parts cleaner, those sensitive O2 sensors. So be careful whenever you do that. Just let the car wash do its thing. They have a catch basin, so you don't have to worry about the oil waste either. All right, well, that does it. We have fixed the leaks. We're going to go for a road test, go through the car wash, and check that list off. Don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and ring that bell because it turns out all your notifications, and you won't miss any future videos. <laughs> that was way too high. <laughs> oh, you just looked at the ceiling over here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. I was going to try to time it with you. <laughs> I'm going to run it and see if I can find where this oil is coming out. You've got to be kidding me.